Good day everyone, this is Ms. Jai and in this lesson, we will talk about context, hypertext, and intertext. In this lesson, let us answer the following questions. First, what is a context? What is intertext? And what is hypertext? Let's begin. Now, do you think that an author's personal background, as well as the environment in which he or she lived in, influences his or her writing? That's right. There is always an inspiration behind the writing of a text, and often it leaves clues about the situation or the reality that served as the backdrop of the text. And this backdrop is known as the context of the text. Now, context being a critical reader also involves understanding that texts are always developed with a certain context. A text is neither written nor read in a vacuum. Its meaning and interpretation are affected by a given set of circumstances. Thus, context is defined as the social, cultural, political, historical, and other related circumstances that surround the text and from the terms itself from which it can be better understood and evaluated and yeah knowledge of the text context helps us in appreciating the text message more deeply now in discovering a text context you may ask questions like when was the work written what were the circumstances and that produced it and what issues deal with it when using context try to represent several perspectives by citing different sources now aside from asking those questions there are also two techniques or ways in analyzing or identifying the context of text development Another important technique in analyzing the context of a text development is defining its intertextual link to another text, or we call this intertext or intertextuality. Now, intertextuality is the modeling of a text meaning by another text. It draws origin from literature and asserts that text can only be understood in relation to other texts. This is seen when an author borrows and transforms a prior text or when you read one text and you reference another. This view recognizes that the text is always influenced by previous texts and in turn anticipates future texts also. Present-day texts are believed to have been based on or at least inspired by previously published literature. Now, while intertextuality seems to be largely applied in the field of literature, it has applications for academic or school-related and technical or work-related reading. Let's take a look at how we can benefit from intertextuality. First, we can widen our knowledge. Now, reading more leads to knowing more, and that can help broaden what you know about the topic. And we can view different texts and different perspectives. When we say perspective, it is the way you see something. Now, when referring to a different texts and authors, it helps in giving you other perspectives about the same topic, preventing you from having a fundamentalist view of things. When we say fundamentalist, means it means having a strict literal interpretation or a literal view on a certain something. And lastly, we can be more certain of what we know. Finding out that your ideas match the ideas of the previous authors helps validate the things you know. It makes the information credible, right? Now, Another technique in analyzing the meaning behind a text or the context is the hypertext. Now, traditionally, reading was viewed as a linear process where you read from the beginning until the end. However, the advent of the internet and technology has 
created ways of reading and processing a text, which includes hypertext. Now, when we say hypertext, it connects topics on a screen to related information, graphics, videos, and music, or information is not simply related to the text. Basically, if you read a text using gadgets, you may have noticed that some web pages have texts that have hyperlinks, normally those underlined in blue color. This information appears as links and is usually accessed by clicking. The reader can jump to more information about a topic, which in turn may have more links. This information are what we call hypertext. Hypertext connects topics on a screen just like this one. Now, this opens up the reader to a wider horizon of information or to a new direction. Now, in a reader, I mean, a reader can skim through sections of a text, freely jumping from one part to another, depending on what aspect of the text interests him or her. Thus, in reading with hypertext, you are given more flexibility and personalization because you get to select the order in which you read the text and focus on the information that is relevant to your background and interest. Therefore, because of this, because you get to select the order in which you read the text, you create your own meaning out of the material. Now, for example, you are doing a research about the Philippine Eagle, like this one. A quick Google search would lead you to a Wikipedia article on it. Information on it would include a picture and a brief written description while reading about the Philippine Eagle. You will also encounter links to, to its conversation status. This may lead you to more information about the conservation efforts. However, if you are interested in the appearance of the Philippine Eagle because you wanted to sketch it for your art class, the same page would provide its physical description and even give you links to pictures and videos of the Philippine Eagle. Thus, depending on your purpose and interest, the article on the Philippine Eagle can lead you to a variety of different detailed facts. So that is how you can identify the context through hypertext. Okay. Now, to end this lesson, don't forget these very important lessons. First, the meaning of the text can be determined based partly on the context in which it was developed. Intertextuality helps people understand better by referring to multiple texts to complete the meaning. And lastly, we have this too. Hypertext is a reading environment that is based on the internet and Hypertext allows people to go to the different texts as fast as internet loading speeds allow. So, there you have it. That's all for our lesson. I hope you learned something from it today. This is your teacher, Teacher Joy. Thank you and see you again.